Well, the man who was at the helm of Streambok Rugby at the time was uh, Jake White, who joins us now telephonically uh, from France. Jake, welcome back to TMO. There was uh, a test series against England in 2006, which started in Bloemfontein, if I'm not mistaken. Um, would you think, would you, is that the beginning, do you think, of the South African recent dominance over, over England? Yeah, Zola, yeah, firstly, thank you for inviting me. It was exactly that. I mean, I think people remember we used to get pumped by England for a long time. You know, they, when they were in their glory days of Greenwood and Tyndall and Johnson and Delalia and Back and Hill, I mean, we used to go there year after year and not win it with them. And so in 2006, we really came close the first time. We lost to them. And in the second game, you know, um, we won that game. I remember the first game, Butch uh, actually got injured. We should have won that game as well, but he, he got injured. His knee got sore and, uh, and left the field, and we, we probably gave a good lead away. So it could have been that in 2006 we beat them twice. Um, but be that as it may, 2006 we came back and beat them. And I think then the whole thing started. You know, we played them four times after that before the World Cup and won all four of those times. Um, beat them by 50 points twice in South Africa. So... Look, I think it went in cycles, Dola. I think, it, to be fair, you know, they, they were the, the form side, uh, you know, when Martin Johnson was the captain. And, it, and then that thing turned on its head and South Africa dominated England. So, yeah, yeah it is a bit sad that they've now gone and lost a 10-year record in England because um, it's something that, that has taken a long time to build up. I, I remember reading the book by Clive uh, Woodward, Winning, I think it's called, which is a very good title. Um, and he applied a lot of um, things to that England team. But you, you mentioned some of the big names, the Neil Backs, the um, Delalios. These guys were quite uh, old in rugby terms. Uh, we also recently, in the lead up to the, last, to the last World Cup, were talking about players, ages, experience versus youth. Jake, is that something that you think we need to get the balance um, right when it comes to that? Well, look, um, you know, I think that every World Cup so far, everyone's tried certain things, and, and you've got to learn from what happens in the past. Well, um, in, 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 in 87, the All Blacks won. They tried to pick the same side in 91. They lost. Australia won it. Then Australia brought the same side to South Africa in 95, and that counted against them. They ended up losing the World Cup. You know, then, then if you look at, uh, you know, the World Cup after that, England in 2007 tried to bring the same side that won in 2003, and that backfired against them. So... Mm. Look, I think that history will tell you that you can't hang on to too many of those players. But, you know, I also think people need to be aware that the average sort of test caps in a World Cup team is about 650. And, uh, you know, that's what you've got to aim for. You've got to aim for getting the balance right between about 650 test caps. So you need some youngsters, but you also need those old wise heads to be there in a World Cup campaign in order to, to get you over the line. Well, Coach, uh, we've asked you to do some homework and we'll take a look at some of the clips you've pulled for us. Before we do that, Bobes, as a player, as a professional international rugby player, how much does it matter how well you know your position? You speak quite a lot about having faced the Kiwis from junior age level all the way up to seniors. The, the likes of, um, uh, I think at the time, I don't know who was playing. Uh, don't John Lomu's were there at the time, in fact. <laughs> don't go um, there. <laughs> but, but you talk about the path you walked yeah. with these guys, having played against them, having seen them as under 19s, under 21s, all the way up. We haven't played England in a couple of years, or at least um, not regularly. How important is it to know your opponents? I mean, it, it is very important, and especially about the mindset of how they go about their thing. And if you, if you, if you see what England has done, especially with the under-20 group and the, how they've gone up game and have started to build up a very prominent group of players who know how to beat the top teams from the Southern Hemisphere within that under-20 group. So that's going to bound go well for them. I mean, we talk about the Murray Togis now, yes. because now they're used to the winning culture, and it's about building that winning culture, making sure players, they, they not step back for anyone. They know that they're world-class players themselves, and they can step up and actually show what they're capable of. So it is important having that knowledge and having actually the experience of beating them, especially away from home and at home so it's it, it is very important psychologically this is what the game is mostly about well Jake um, I mentioned you've done some homework for us uh, you've picked out a couple of clips and you just have to talk us through why you selected these and the first one I'm going to put uh, on telly knowing that you you can't see them where you are is the South Africa versus uh, USA uh, World Cup pool match that ended 64-15 uh, um, which was played in Montpellier before we show the clip what is it about the clip you want to highlight? 
Yeah, look, I think there's a couple of clips, and I think the point is this, uh, Kola, um, and Butchie was there, so I suppose Butchie, when I'm finished, Butchie can explain in more detail exactly, because I can't really see, although I have got those clips in front of me. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the first clip, uh, Kola, it's the game against uh, America in Montpellier. There's a line-out in the, in the 24th minute, uh, and is that the same one you're looking at now? Yes, where, that's where the John one. Smith throws to John Smith at the back of the line-out. That's it. Right. So if you look at that clip, you'll see that when Skulk Berger carries the ball into contact, I mean, the whole of, the whole of America are around that ball. And they obviously realize, look, that he's, he's the dominant ball carrier and everything's going to revolve around him. And I think that if you can, for me, Tola, you can stop it when he goes into contact. Because that's, a, that's you know, basically that's the first play we ran. The we reason we ran it, it was to make sure they watched him. It was in order to get the defence to be nice and narrow and make sure that they have to double up in, in terms of tackling against him. And then we go to the next clip, Kula. We go to the next clip against uh, against uh, America. Okay. Okay. And if you look at the next clip, Butchie will remember this one as well. We wrote uh, in the clip. The next clip was, if you look carefully, Skull comes into the line-out and then he starts to leave the line-out very quickly. He runs around on a little bit of a, a sort of an arc play and the ball comes out quickly. And you'll see that we've actually sucked in all the American defenders when Brian Abana goes over to score in the corner. Now, I mean, that wasn't by chance, Kula. Basically, the first one we set up, we got Skull to run hard and make sure that he could go hard at them. Second one, we made sure we got quick ball and they jammed in. And then the third clip, if you look carefully, you'll see that in the second half, when they were obviously now thinking that... Uh, that uh, Skulk was going to make contact again. Yeah. We then played the line out, went to Skulk. He went out the back to Butch, back inside to JP, and then obviously that led to a try by Jacques Ferry. Mm. Okay. We don't we don't have we don't have that one. But um, in in essence, what you're talking about is one line out um, variation, and I know you guys did quite a lot of that in the 2017 um, Butchie. Uh, and uh, you're also talking uh, about defenders. You've got to keep the defenders guessing, and something that we don't seem to be doing these days, guys. No, no, and I think also, I think line-out for me is, is one of the best balls to attack from. You know, you get, uh, obviously, the opposition are 10 metres away from the line-out. You're meant to be 10 metres from the line-out. If you take it nice and flat, you're going to be over the advantage line. Uh, and like Jake said, if you get that quick ball, you're again attacking, running onto the ball. It's pretty hard as a defender running backwards, trying to defend and, and get into place when you're attacking the line and uh, going forward. So for me, the line-out is our best attacking option. And, and uh, like Jake's, I think, getting to, I think you also got to keep the opposition guessing. So yeah. what you do is you maybe hit it up with Skulk first up. Now everyone sucked in on Skulk. It's quite easy, plenty of gaps in, and, and JP can go through, you know. So you've, you've always got to be trying to fool, and it's almost like a game of chess, trying to uh, outsmart the, the opposition. So I know, I know one thing that um, when Eddie was coaching the Brumbies, he always used to tell Stephen Larkham the first ball he gets off a line out, yeah. he must throw a dummy and carry because from then on, everyone's going to it's think, she's he's going to carry gonna the ball, run. and then that opens up space out wide for, for the rest of his players. Jake, I remember you talking quite extensively about the importance of scoring a first-phase ball. It's something that I don't think we've done particularly well um, in the last five, six years. Has um, the game changed? Uh, are the defences that much tighter? Or, to your mind, is it still the most effective... Um, place to, to get tries on the board, uh, scoring off first phase? No, well, I mean, it's, it's exactly that, I think, Kola. It's exactly that. I think that uh, nothing's changed. I mean, the reality is the game's the same. You've got to get ball going forward. And from first phase, you know where the defence is. You've got to make sure you're asking questions of the defence. You know? And I suppose that brings me to the next two clips, Kola. So look what happened this weekend, and it's quite, you know, it's quite scary to watch. Right. The very first clip is England in the eighth minute of the game. Okay. And if you watch carefully, they take it quickly. Just stop it, and you can look where the fullback is. So if you can stop it, you look where our fullback is. So maybe what you can do again, call a start it at the beginning and just play it again. Look where our fullback is. Okay, we're look starting how quickly it up. They play. We, and we're okay. rolling it. Yeah, okay. you can and see now Billy. you just watch. When, when Billy Fowler gets the ball, he did exactly what Skulk did in the first game against America. He ran as hard as he could into contact. Hmm. Okay, so in other words, what Eddie said, what Eddie gave to the South Africans and Butchie said it just now, when Larkin take the first ball and have a go, he said the reason for that is he wanted the defence to be narrow. Now we're on to the second clip. Caller, the very next clip, on the 10th minute of the game, they yeah. go to exactly the same line-up. And if you play it now, you'll have a look. 
That's it. And it's and gone out fair. And now goes out the back. That's it. Common and copy Johnny May scores in the corner. And now they're going to score in the corner. Now, all I'm asking, all I'm asking you is that if you've done your homework, if you've understood that's what Eddie likes, if you understand that that's what he's passed on to the Springbok side in 2007, mm. then I'd like to finish just with the last clip, Kula, while I'm talking before you ask me some more questions. Sure. <laughs> At the last World Cup against Japan, we yes. lost to Japan in a, in a move, and he did exactly the same move against us the last time we played against an Eddie Jones coach team. So they had a line-out against Japan. It went off the top. Same move, back inside, and they're going to score. There we go. It's going, it's going out now, and nice little inside pass for a winger who had a wonderful game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did, and they score uh, in the corner. Steve Borthwick, I think he's... Um, line-out coach, yeah. He line-out coach for Japan. He was also moved with Eddie to England. Do you think he's uh, one of the key fellows when it comes to, to plotting uh, their dominance off, off line-out ball? Yeah, look, I've got no doubt that that combination works. And I think, again, you know, a lot of people have spoken about coaches and, and the kind of coaches you need. I mean, Eddie's taken Steve Borthwick, who's relatively inexperienced, took him from Saracens with him to, to Japan and then took him now as, a, as, as an assistant coach, you know, to England. So, obviously, he does the work that Eddie needs him to do. But I suppose the message for me, Kola, is, is you know, that, that concern, and I'm sure Butchie will elaborate on it as well, is that everyone knows what was coming. Eddie's done it against us with different sides. Eddie's mm -hmm. coached with us and given us his insight as to what his thinking is from line-out play and where you should be attacking. And yet, when you look at those two clips, I mean, Bunapola running up the first one, sucking everyone in. The next one, he takes it and goes out the back. I mean, it's almost like it, uh, it's, a, it's a brief of what Eddie was going to do in the first place. You know, and we looked as though we were, we were sort of tears uh, in the headlights when, when, that, when that move was run against us. Yeah. And I think, you know, that, that is, I suppose, the concern because that, that, isn't, that isn't the defensive area. That's just not being in place and understanding what's coming, you know. All right, Jake, we've also got a couple of tweets coming in, um, and we unfortunately don't have too much time to keep you on the show, so I'm going to throw one of those, uh, which is from uh, Rajosa, who asks, what do you think Jesse Creel's best position is? What do I think, sorry? Jesse Creel, is he best at 13 or is he best at 15? Yeah, look, I think that... Uh... You know, I'm not sure where he's best. They've never coached him, so I think it's a bit unfair for me to say that. Mm. But what I do know is that he can't play, you know, 15 for the Bulls and 13 for South Africa or, or vice yeah. versa. I think what's got to happen is there that they should be playing in those franchises in the same positions, if possible. I know that we have a different dynamic. So to be honest, I really don't know. I've never worked with him, and I'm, yeah. and I'm not really sure where he would fit into that back line. Now, Coach, I, I think he's a Marisburg College boy, so I think we must put him at flower, <laughs> and then the next World Cup we might win it, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I suppose which is right. You know, any, if they play Marisburg College guard flower, they usually win a World Cup. So we've got to There you go. Um, Coach, I see the Italians have already named their team for this weekend, and they have been bashed and battered a little, and they'll be bruised, but they will have obviously been gunning for, I think, the Springboks, if you take a look at their tour, at their schedule, what chance do we have? Uh, is it as simple as making one or two twe uh, tweaks to the team to game plan, or is it uh, going to re require a complete re uh, re look, an overhaul of um, our approach to the game? Gola, uh, I, look, I think we, we don't. I don't want to sound arrogant, but if we're asking each other whether we're good enough to beat it, Italy in a Test match, then we have got a problem. I mean, we should never lose to Italy in a Test match, and the reason for that is, is that we've got so many players in our country. You know, if a junior side played from junior level right through to under 21 level right up to senior level, we would win every single game. So, you know, I don't think we need to stress about it. I think we just need to believe we can win, continue doing, you know, the yeah. things that we've done at junior level and we'll be good enough to win that game. I mean, they've been hit with injuries. That's even more reason why we should win that game easily. Well, Coach, thanks very much for, for highlighting those. We'll be looking out for those. I, I don't think we're going to see the big changes, unfortunately, during the course of the tour. Uh, we'll definitely talk um, after Italy or towards the end of the year as well, just uh, to continuously pick your brain as to what it is we can do to see the Springboks improve. So thanks very much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye, Bucci. Cheers, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye -bye. Cheers. Bye -bye.